we started out working with a, a fashion designer called Edward Gibbon, who really set the look of skins over many series. Um, and the baton has been picked up by various people since then. Um, but I think Edward always had a clear view of what he wanted to do, to just try and make uh, the kids in the show look incredible, but in different and unconventional ways. Skins taught me a lot about fashion because I didn't have a clue when I started. I was completely, I still am pretty hopeless. I'm wearing like a granny jumper. Um, but, um, but the costume designs have always been incredible, really, really cool. I know that uh, Katie, the costume designer, started off initially with the idea of just she wanted to make sure that nothing I was wearing looked very new. So she did a lot of shopping in charity shops and vintage stores. When I was originally involved, it was Ed Gibbon. I was, I was grateful that Ed uh, listened to me throughout the whole sort of deciding process. And uh, he, he was interested in my opinions, which is rare to be fair. Because we both crafted him, it was, it was, it was a real touch to see Kate uh, cutting onto that in her time working beneath him. And now she's designed him. Uh, I think the first year it was very much about the bright colours and the kind of pop out stuff. But the, one of the main reasons I love to play in Effie was because I got to dress completely different to how I do day to day. And it kind of really influenced my fashion nowadays. The costume approach was very specific, especially in the Effie one, because we had three sort of um, categories of her costume. One when she was the receptionist, so she didn't have much money, but she was being stylish and we didn't want her to dress in dark greys and blacks or suits. Then the second uh, stage she was getting a bit more money and she was sort of experimenting a bit more and then the third one she was really very classy and looked absolutely fantastic. I spoke to the costume designer Kate for a long time before because we didn't want it to be too obvious. We didn't want to go backwards and have her in fishnets again and, and kind of because she'd grown up and just like my fashion has changed a lot in the last five years I believed hers would as well. Obviously uh, you've got to work together and not overpower costumes or vice versa. In particular in um, Skins Fire uh, with Effie there's a lot of red uh, in a lot of the locations we chose. We found a fantastic empty office building in order to build a, a trading floor of a bank uh, and there was a lot of very bright colours in there, very bright reds and a lot of glass and reflections so obviously it's talking her through that so that she can work either with that or against that. Effie's going to work in the city of London, we've got to shoot it in Manchester. She's going to work in a Hewitt Morris asset management, she's going to work in a trust fund uh, office. So we need a vacant office, you can't rent a, an office and send people away, companies don't want to close down, so we need to find a vacant office. And, and Emma found this brilliant office in Manchester which is essentially an empty shell and then Paul Cripps, our designer, me and him spent a lot of time talking about what we're going to put in there. He then designed a space which A, I think looked convincing, but B, you know, I'm a little bit like, I want to shoot through things, so what are we going to do about that? And he's like, well, how about conceptually we put up a whole load of like, perspex screens and this sort of thing. So the design of that office, you know, hu hugely important. We had a brilliant set designer called Paul Cripps who did 24 hour party people. Um, and he was a local man, we were filming up in Manchester and it, and it was great, it was kind of, you know, it really came through on screen, that kind of vibrance and, and the colours and the, the detail, so much detail. Um, and the office space was incredible, it was like, being in an office is such a foreign thing to me. Um, and kind of seeing it all laid out with the computers and the glass and stuff, was really, really beautiful visually. And, but my favourite was the girls' flat, Effie and Naomi's flat. I think if you look closely, you can see so much detail that represents both of them. There's even a couple of pictures of me and Lily in Jamaica on holiday that they've kind of dotted, hidden around the flat to try and spot them. We had to build a, a house on, by the sea on the beach, which we couldn't find as a location, so we ended up building a house literally on the beach. The kind of the chaos of his mental state and of the whole family life I think is really well reflected in the set design. Certainly from the location point of view Manchester brings a, a whole sort of visual palette of new locations which uh, after six series in Bristol it was uh, we'd seen everything. We shot on location entirely which we haven't actually done since I think the first season of Skins. Uh, we stopped doing it because it was so crazily difficult 
um, in all the, with all the different characters. But when we were focusing on slightly fewer characters, it made location shooting easier again. Visually, it's got to have things in it that aren't instantly recognisable as, as, as Manchester. Over six episodes, it, it makes it a little difficult just to make sure that any wide shots, we don't have tower blocks or canals in it that wouldn't be, say, in Camden or, or, or areas of, of North London. Each story was, again, very, very different. So we didn't really want to build a studio. Um, so I went out, found locations. Um, a lot of them are incredibly beautiful, actually. Uh, the depiction of the city in the Caio Scodelario episodes, and then a completely different city in the Hannah Murray episode, and then a kind of strange, nightmarish Manchester uh, in the Jack O'Connell episode, very different, threatening. Um, so I think our set designers have done a fantastic job.